back to another video and today I'm going to be talking to you about a challenge that I took um, a few weeks, roughly a month ago, um, and that was to do two things that I don't usually do. And so um, one was to do street photography and go around the streets and just like photograph and see what I could find interesting. And then the second one, do this, but with a digital camera. So. I have to say right off the bat that I've taken a lot from this um, sort of like quote unquote challenge. And this was all fueled by one question. And the question was, is street photography without people still street photography? Is it possible? Can we call it street photography still? And so I guess that you've realized that we've got a lot to talk about. I have a lot to show you, including some results and some interesting ideas that I kind of like gathered as I um, you know, put myself through this experience. So with that being said, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's go straight to another video. So what is street photography? So in my research, I came across different definitions of street photography, and most of them involved capturing people, the human element, or human presence, in unarranged circumstances, chance encounters, or random incidents. And three words that stood out to me when I was reading and thinking of this street photography business were candid, presence, and storytelling. Candid meaning genuine, frank, presence in terms of human presence, and storytelling meaning the capacity of a photo to translate a story. And just like there's many ways of capturing things, different genres of photography and whatnot, there's naturally many ways to tell a story, and there's even more ways of capturing human presence without the necessity of capturing a face, a gesture, in conclusion, people. And so I came to the conclusion that street photography also relied a lot on the power of suggestion. And so the question posed, could I capture in the streets images that suggested some type of presence and storytelling? Could I, in essence, do street photography without people? Well, I think this question can be easily answered by going through some of the work of great photographers we've studied so far here on the channel. Names like William Eggleston, Fred Herzog, Joel Meyerowitz, or Stephen Shaw. All of them created images at some point that hinted at human presence without featuring people, focusing more on the idea of what's left behind, which is something that I like to explore on my work. And looking at some examples, I gain an understanding that sometimes the lines can be blurred between documentary, photojournalism, and street photography. And the truth is that street photography, from what I read as well, doesn't necessarily presuppose that you need to be working in the streets. It presupposes instead that you capture this so-called human presence at chance, randomly, in unarranged circumstances. And so this led me to think that sometimes these notions, preconceptions, words, function kind of like boxes. And sometimes these boxes are not closed, and sometimes their borders or edges simply merge with other things, because, you know, we can have a photo that can belong to two different like types of photography or genres of photography. And so basically what this also made me think is that nothing is the uni universal truth and nothing is entirely right or entirely better because it all depends on our subjectivity. Now one thing as well that probably our sponsor would agree with is that it's not necessarily true that buying new gear is better than buying used gear. And that is because MPB is one of the largest platforms where you can buy, sell, or trade used gear. And this brings lots of advantages for you. Essentially, it makes gear more affordable to you. And by dabbling with used equipment, you're also participating in a more sustainable future. Not to mention that when you do buy, sell, or trade with MPB, the whole transaction is quite seamless, can be entirely arranged online, and MPB even offers you services to collect your used gear from your doorstep. And so if you're planning new projects, photography, filmmaking, planning trips to other countries, or simply wanting to try out new gear for the experience of it, check out their website for more information on this. And this is why I accepted the challenge by my friends at MPB, when they challenged me to pick up a camera and kind of like give my thoughts on it, and you know, go experience, you know, and I think the word here is experience, because I took this as an opportunity of growth. And in photography, as much as other, you know, fields of the arts, 
um, you know, filmmaking, writing, etc. A lot relies on experience. And so for me, I think the most, one of the most important things you can do is to challenge yourself, experience more of the world, whether that is with new year, with, you know, year that you've owned for, you know, 10 years or more, but also like be open to these new challenges and new things, everything that comes your way, because it can all function as a lesson. Okay, so the challenge I set for myself was to photograph an unfamiliar busy city with an unfamiliar camera on manual focus, capturing human presence, but without people, or perhaps only with reflections in case they happen to be impossible to avoid. And judging on my experience and my results, I would say that yes, it is possible to create storytelling and depict human presence by focusing on what's left behind. And this was my compass, the idea of what's left behind the questions it can raise and the ideas or feelings one picture can evoke on the viewer. I wasn't 100% in love with my results, to be honest, but that is because it wasn't my style of photography. But I think some results were visually interesting, but also the idea that I could play with shooting in color in black and white as I went along walking the streets, and with that understand the importance of color and compare my results with and without it. And whilst working around with this camera, I also understood the importance of doing more with less. I was working with the available light, which wasn't that great, with simple shapes and details of light and shadow, and I wasn't after doing really complex things, because I understood that sometimes the less can also say more. And I wouldn't finish this video without leaving you some thoughts on the Fuji X-T4, which was the tool I used for this video. And this is an hybrid camera, meaning that you can take high resolution photos, but also capture 4K video, which for me was a plus whilst working in the street and recording some of the scenery I was photographing without having to recur to a second camera. I enjoyed playing around with the film simulations it has, and my favorites were the Acros, the Classic Negative, and Eternal Cinema. This might sound funny, but the fact that it has dedicated dials for the ISO, shutter speed, exposure compensation, and so on, made it not as non-familiar to me. Which, I know, it might sound silly, but I prefer things to be less automatic and more manual, and so I can have more control over what I'm doing. The shutter was surprisingly quiet as well, which, for street work, is cool because it makes it less noticeable. In my opinion, the built quality is really good, and I like the retro look and design of it. And one thing I have to say is that I can see this camera being a versatile one, that I can use for different occasions, and in this particular case, the lens I was using was the Fujinon XF 16-55mm, which in itself is a very sharp and versatile lens, that obviously paired with this camera can definitely make it a good tool for different purposes, I imagine, such as portrait photography, street documentary, wedding photography, you name it. But overall, this is a big thumbs up for me in terms of like the whole experience of dealing with this camera and just like shooting and, you know, being put into unfamiliar circumstances, places, faces. And, you know, I enjoy the experience and I think that it's all another step in my growth as a photographer. And so I'd like to thank you for watching and supporting the channel. It truly means a lot. And thank you, a special thank you, for everyone who has been uh, purchasing a print, I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot and it helps supporting the channel. So if you'd like to do so, links will be down below as well as links to my social media and my work if you're curious about that. But I'd also like to thank the folks at MPB for, you know, um, having given me this opportunity to have this experience. And so if you'd like to, you know, buy, sell, trade, you are welcome to do so. Link will be down below. And yeah, I guess that it's all for today. So thank you all so much for the constant support, for the feedback. Leave your feedback down below and also slap that like button because why not? If you enjoyed the video and you let more people know that you enjoyed it, so they might enjoy it too. So yeah, I guess that I'll see you soon here on the channel. So stay safe, keep shooting, film, digital, whatever. And yeah, I'll see you. Peace.